Hallelujah. I tell you, beloved, that song ministers to my spirit. I, I hear an urgency in the call of God. I, I hear it in my spirit. That call is to the church, for the church to respond to him while we can. Amen. To praise him while our lips still sing. To worship him while our knees can still bend. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The master's calling. And he's, his call is reaching out to his people. For them to be on one accord with him. Because God is after something. But he needs his people in alignment with him. I'm telling you, I sense an urgency in the call. And I just thank God for the opportunity. And I won't, I won't uh, belabor the moment. I want to get in to the word this morning. I honor the spirit of Christ today. I honor each of you today that are here. I appreciate your assembly. And I want to continue from last week's message of him, about his sacrifice. May his sacrifice be more understood. Because when we do, there are layers in that revelation that will minister to a different aspect of your life. And so I just praise God for that today. We, we give a shout out, amen, to, to Pastor Tanya. We give a shout out to the covenant apostles and our covenant ministries, amen. And we just thank God for what he's doing. And I had the privilege a, of sharing on Friday. I had a chance to minister on Friday uh, at 11 a.m. to this international group that they had, they had asked me to share a word and immediately there was a word in my spirit that God had given to me that has now gone global. And I'm telling you, I believe that this is what God is doing. He's, he's, he's dealing with us in such a way to where he's ripening us to where we become food for the nations. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to be food for the nation? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So let's go to Colossians again, chapter 2. And in way of review, beginning from verse 8, I shared with you where the Apostle Paul begins to minister to the church. Because he wants them to guard themselves against the philosophy of men. To guard themselves against the tradition of men. To guard themselves against false teaching. False teaching that says that Jesus is not enough. Come on this morning. You remember the word last week that, that, that the... That the False teachers will always tell you that you need something more than the Lord himself. That, that you have to do something a certain number of times to, to, in a sense, be validated as a people. That's what false teaching does. And what it, what it attacks, it attacks the, the supremacy of Christ. And then it attacks your identity in him it attacks him and then it attacks your identity because the enemy wants you to have an identity in all this other stuff the enemy wants you to have an identity on based upon what type of car you drive the enemy wants you to have an identity based upon the clothes you wear or the house you live in. See, it's always something in addition to him that tells you that you are not 
good enough unless you identify with all these other things. But I thank God today that we have our identity in Christ and nothing else. Come on, I don't care whether you got a million dollars a day or one, if you are in Christ, you have your true identity. Oh, hallelujah. I say you have your true identity. Whether you're married or single, you have your identity in Jesus alone. And that's what the enemy wants to attack. That's why we are searching for all these other things to validate us. This is why we believe we need five diplomas on the wall and then we're validated. Come on, this is why we are told today to measure our churches and our preachers by whether they've gone to seminary school or not, not whether they've been sent by God. You tell it, you tell it. Hallelujah. Whether they finished a certain course or not. Now y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm not speaking against those things. Those things are all right, but those things are not, listen, those things have no bearing on whether you are called by God and whether you are identified with Him. Praise God. Technical difficulty is not going to stop. Come on. Our identity has come under attack, but this is the problem. We didn't know what he was doing to us. Let me, let, me, let me ask y'all this. Do, don't you, do you feel better when you, you have money in your pocket or you have a better car to drive you? Those things make us feel good, and it should, but it has no bearing right. on identity. Right. Amen. 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 Some of y'all told that you would never be anything unless you went to school and you did everything you could to take this course, that course. And when you took it, you thought you were validated. But what you didn't know was you were already validated the moment you accepted him. Don't you measure yourself by a flawed system. I, I think I'm touching something here. Uh, and that was just a review, bro, Clarence. I'm sorry. That was just a review. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God forbid that we would lower the standard that he has set for a man-made system that is flawed from the beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can call me what you want. I know who I am now. Amen. You can say that's one crazy country boy, but I know who I am now. Amen. But I'm sorry, let me let me get this review with so I can take you a little bit further into it for the next few minutes. And I just want to read verse 8 over because that's where we launched from. In Colossians chapter 2 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments or teachings of the world, and not after Christ. 
Amen. And I shared with you that being spoiled was being carried away, kidnapped. That the enemy kidnapped you and pulled you away from the truth to start your dependence on something or someone other than Christ. That's being spoiled. That's being defeated. And I shared with you how the Romans would do that to where when they went to conquer somebody, they would, they would have this great big parade, all the pomp and circumstance. They would have all of these things in the parade and on the, it looked, on the tail end of the, of the parade was the king that was conquered. Amen. Showing the city the spoil. Yeah. How they had just won the victory. And Paul is warning that them don't become spoiled. But not based upon a sword, but the tradition of men. Hallelujah. Don't get carried away, kidnapped. Amen. Amen. Away from the truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jesus. I say we thank God for Jesus. Listen to this. False teachers fail to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God. And they undermine his uniqueness as the God man. What does that mean? All God and all man. They'd rather say that he's all man but not God. They want to they want to to strip him of that aspect of, of his deity. But I praise God this morning that because of Jesus, I have my true identity. And so now I want to take it a little bit further and I'm going to go to verse 9 today. And oh God, I hope y'all can catch this principle today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shared part of this on Friday and I hope you can catch it. Verse 9 of Colossians 2. For in him, come on say in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Come on, let y'all 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 need to highlight that scripture because remember I said when we understand his sacrifice more, we understand who we are even more. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, underscore bodily if you, if you have uh, your, your, your Bibles with you, underscore that. Amen. Amen. What is the Godhead? It's the Father. It's the Son. And it's the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. I'm, make, I'm trying to make this practical for you. The Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, for in him, oh Lord, I'm trying to walk you through it. In Jesus dwelleth all the, listen, dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Bodily. Come on, not in the spirit, but the fullness of the Godhead is in bodily form. Why would God want the Godhead expressed in a body? I'm talking about knowing your identity. If listen, if the fullness dwells in Him, go ahead. Listen to the amplified version. I'm, I'm trying to teach this thing. Lord have mercy. Listen to, listen to this. 
And it will answer the question as to why God wanted the Godhead expressed in bodily form. For in him, the whole fullness of deity, in parentheses, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form. But oh God, listen to this, beloved. And this explains why God wanted the fullness in him, Amen. in bodily form. Amen. Listen to this now. Giving complete expression of the divine nature. Oh, y'all hearing me this morning? The fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him to be a complete expression of the divine nature of God. That's why he had to dwell in bodily form. God wanted a complete expression of his nature. I'm going to let that digest just for a minute. God wanted a complete expression without fault, without weakness, without prejudice. Are you hearing me? Without condemnation, he wanted a complete expression of his nature. And y'all please help me with this Bible scholars. The Bible tells us God's nature is. Come on, help me out. What is his nature? His nature is love. Amen. And God wanted a complete expression of his nature of holiness of righteousness he wanted a complete expression y'all understand when i keep stressing the word complete because there are times i don't fully have the complete expression all right now amen 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 but in him Dwell at the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form to be an ex a complete expression of God's nature. Y'all, I'm trying to take you somewhere. Listen to what Colossians 1.19 says. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. It pleased God that in him should all fullness dwell. I'm leading y'all right up to the water. I'm gonna I'm 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 ask you to come take a dip with me in a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this now. And this as I was looking at these theologians, there was one thing, one quote that caught my attention. And it says, the sum total of deity resides in Jesus, the incarnate word of God. The sum total of all that deity is can be found in Jesus. Why do you think the devil's still trying to send this false teaching to make you think your identity is in something else? Because he don't want you depending totally upon who Jesus is. He still wants you searching out certain things. Now hear me, beloved. It's all right to go and get education. It's all right to go to some vocation. But if you think that your identity is in that, you have already been kidnapped. I am who I am because of him. Amen. 
John 1 says, John 1 and 1 says this, in the beginning was the Word. Come on, and the Word was with God. Listen to this now, and the Word was God. Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, God clothed himself in a body. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. Come on, listen to this. Half full. Full. Come on. In him dwells fullness. Full of grace and truth. Therein lies the fullness of the Godhead. In him. Now hear me, beloved. Now I want to bring you to the water now. Let's take a dip this morning. And then I, I promise you I'm going to try to close this off. Who is the fullness? Come on, y'all still, you still reluctant to talk to me. Who is the fullness? Let's go back to this now. You've got Jesus Christ who has, who is the in bodily form as the Father, as the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So Jesus is a visible representation of the God. So when you have Jesus, you got it all. When you got Jesus, you have the Father, you have the Son, and you have the Holy Ghost. He's the fullness, the complete expression of the divine nature. Let's get in the war. Verse 10 will bring us and we're going to get into the war. Now y'all hear me. And I don't mean this in any slight. We thought that our husbands and our wives and our children would complete us. But we found out that even with them, or oh, y'all better come on talk to me, that even with them, there was still something missing. Amen. I'm going to say amen whether y'all hesitant or not. Some of y'all got your spouse sitting by you and you don't want to say it. That's not taking anything away from our spouses or our children. But they don't complete me. I'm satisfied with my family. But even when I'm around my family and everything is going right, I still sometimes feel a need for someone else. Y'all, y'all stay with me. Let me just, I'm going to try to finish this verse. Verse 10. And ye are complete in him. Which is the head of all principality and power. Now please hear this. I want to read this in the Amplified. And then I want to read some notes I've got typed up here. And you are in him made full and having come to fullness of life in Christ you too, y'all hear this, are filled with the Godhead. The Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit and reach full spiritual stature. And he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. Hear me. We are complete in him. Now this is the point I want to make. If he is fullness, and I'm in vital union with him, then I have fullness in me. Some of y'all still hadn't caught it yet. I said, if he is the fullness of the Godhead, and I'm in vital union with him, I have fullness in me. There is no lack in me. I didn't say, I didn't feel like it was sometimes, but I am telling you today, beloved, that if he's the fullness of the Godhead and I'm in union with him, I live every day with fullness in me. And there is no lack in me whatsoever. And that's the word I stand on regardless of what I feel, regardless of what I see, regardless of what happens. I am full. Hallelujah. Don't you ever go another day talking about what's lacking in you. Hallelujah. There's fullness in you. And that fullness is the head of all principality and power. Did y'all hear that? That fullness that is in you is the head of all principality and power. And all you do is release the fullness in you. You don't have to sit here and curse the devil. Come on. Y'all remember when the Bible said when Michael, he, when the enemy came against him, he said he didn't even bring an accusation against the devil. He knew who he was. Amen. He knew the authority he had. He just said, the Lord rebuke you. Right. Why y'all arguing with the devil for? I know that's right. That's right. That's right. The fullness is in us and he is the head of all principality and power. Michael just said, the Lord rebuke you. Today, we have hour-long sessions on how to rebuke the devil. <laughs> My God, and the enemy looks at that and laughs, and he understands they don't know the identity because they still plead. Michael didn't have to say, you lying scum, you this and that. Why try to, why you insult the devil? Why are you trying to insult him? Rebuke him in the name of the Lord. Fullness is in me. The head of all principality and power is in me. And you are what? Complete in him. Don't ever let the enemy carry you away spoil again thinking that you need something else to be complete. Amen. Is it nice to have a nice car? Sure it is. That car don't complete me. Is it good to live in a home where there's, it's not raining on you? Yes. But the home don't complete me. I'm made complete in that which is not made by hands. In me dwells the Godhead. And he is Jesus. The head of all principality and power. That's who he is. Some of you are still digesting it. It's all right. Amen. 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 Okay. is in winter time. Listen to this. 
Uh, let me share this. I said I, I'm, I'm trying to stop there, but hear this. Because of their vital union with Jesus, the full one, believers have been given fullness. Because of our vital union with the full one. Come on. How many believe that as it, there's some emptiness in Christ? Oh, no. no, he's full. Oh, no. Oh, no. So if we're in union with the full one, yeah. then we have received fullness. Amen. Come on, come on. Listen, listen to John 1, 16. And of his half emptiness. Oh, no. no, that's not what it says. Oh, no. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Or let me read it like this. And I made a little note there of his completeness. We have received. I didn't receive anything that was not complete. I said I didn't receive anything that was not complete. Now, that don't mean that I've, I've grown into all of it, but what's in there is complete. Don't confuse what's there with what's manifested. Because there are certain things we're going to grow into. But it's, it's important that we acknowledge what's in there. Of his completeness. I have received grace for grace. Hallelujah. Let me let me close with this one. In Ephesians, he says, and y'all know Ephesians 4, he said, till we all come to the fullness. What is he talking about? Till we all grow into it. We need to grow up and understand. What is he talking about? Till we grow up and understand what's there. And starts demonstrating what's already in there. Once you start manifesting more and more of God, it don't mean that you just got more and more of God. It just means you grew up in certain areas of your life. Oh God, y'all better get with me. It just means that you grew up some. And you begin to be a fuller expression of who he is in you. You didn't receive more of him. I've already received of his fullness. But as Paul said to the Ephesian church, you grow into this thing. If you still function in the same way you were last year, it just simply don't mean that you don't have God there. It means you haven't grown into him. And that means you haven't done those things that are necessary for him to be an expression through you. Of his fullness, we have received. Paul said now, till we all come to that fullness. That's there already. It's up for grabs now, for as far as the church is concerned. Don't be carried away as spoiled any longer. Don't reach for anything or anybody else to make you feel complete. Amen. You've already received Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead. Grow up in him. Are you hearing me, church? Grow up in him. And to grow, you have to have an appetite. You got to eat. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you for the word of life. We agree with you that of your fullness we have received. And we acknowledge before you that we are complete in you. And so we acknowledge by your word that today we have no lack in us. We have fullness in us. 
because Jesus is in us. And may we, oh God, grow into the fullness that we be an expression of your fullness so that this world may look upon us and see the very complete expression of your nature.